Hey everybody, in this video we've got a really exciting new miniature to paint because we're going to be painting a Centurion for Caesar's Legion and this is for Fallout Wasteland Warfare by Modiphius Entertainment. Now Caesar's Legion is a great faction to paint because they've got a nice flash of colour in them with that red and also lots of little subtle details. It's really interesting to look at each individual model and pick those parts out and by following the methods we're going to use for this miniature you'll be armed with a lot of information you need to paint the entire warband. So we hope you enjoy this video and we'll see you at the desk. To paint a soldier from Caesar's Legion, the first thing that you need to do once you've built your miniature is to undercoat it with Zandri Dust Spray from Citadel because this is a fantastic starting point for the colours we're going to be using, especially because a number of those colours are going to be contrast paints from Citadel. And as you'll see, what these allow us to do is very quickly block in areas of colour and give them a slightly washed out feel which is perfect for miniatures from the Fallout Wasteland. Now because Zandri Dust is so important, you do need to make sure you start from this colour. If you don't have that spray though, don't worry about it. Just undercoat the miniatures with your colour of choice and then paint them completely with a khaki that's not like Zandri Dust. But once your miniature is this colour, we're ready to start applying some other colours to it. And the first one we're going to use is one of Citadel's contrast paints. And the colour is Black Templar. Now to apply it, go for a medium sized brush. I have a regiment brush here from the Army Painter. And what I'm going to do is put some of this onto a palette. And I've got a regular palette here because contrast paint behaves correctly in a normal palette like this. Avoid a wet palette for using this kind of paint. And using this, what I can then do is control exactly how much I have my brush. And it's very easy to overdo this and swamp the miniature with colour. So let's use the palette and some tissue to get rid of excess paint and then load up fresh and then you're set to go. And with this, what we're looking to do is to apply it over all the details that we want to be black. And I'm going to be painting this miniature like how Modificer Studio One's done. So that begins with the kilt, which is around here. You see, I'm just going to start blocking it in with this colour like this. Being careful of the details as I go, such as these details that are hanging down there and the little bits of armour. Just looking for the fabric like that. In addition, what I'm also going to be looking for is the boots and also the gauntlets as well. And it's just a matter of painting them in like this and giving it five minutes to dry. Once you've picked out that black detail, we're then ready to move on to applying the first coat of leather colour to it. And for this, what we're going to use is some Fire Slayer Flesh. So once again, one of Citadel's contrast paints. And to apply it, I'm going to be following the same method as what I did in the previous step. So I still have that regiment brush, and it's just a matter of getting a small amount of this ready on the palette. And you can see it's actually a flesh colour. But over the top of Zandri Dust, it looks much more like a kind of leathery, warm brown colour. So really useful for this sort of thing. And with this, what we need to do is paint in the trousers. So there's not much to do really. It's essentially just this part you can see between the straps around about here, just up there and in there as well. And with that done, we're then ready to carry on to applying the next base coat. And in fact, the next five base coats all use very much the same technique. So what we're going to do is just run through those quickly for you now. First of all, what we need is some Wazdaka Red for that signature Seasons Legion Red colour on the miniature. But then after that, we're going to move on to another contrast paint, this time Snakebite Leather. This is going to be for all the leather straps and details on the model. Now after that we can move on to the metallics, and for this we need three. First of all we're going to be using some gun metal from the Army Painter, which is going to be for the dark metal silver, so the armour for example. Then after that we're going to be moving on to painting some bright gold, and this is for a few golden details on the model. And then finally we need some plate mail metal, this is going to be for the brighter silver details, mostly on the thermic lamps. But first of all what we need is Wazdaka Red, and to apply it I'm again going for my regiment brush, and with this because it's more of a regular paint, this one, it's just a matter of getting it onto your palette, then add a touch of water to it to thin it down. So a little mix in there like that so it's much smoother. Bringing it down to around about this consistency here. See, I'm just testing it on the palette. You'll see that it's flowing well from the brush. And then using the palette to make sure my brush isn't overloaded by just twisting away excess paint. And then we're ready to start applying it to all the details we need to be red. Now these are again scattered across the miniature, but they are mostly the fabric around his neck and down his back as this little cape around here. There's also the crest on the helmet, so this part up the top here, but also there's his shirt as well. Now getting to some of this can be a little bit tricky, so switch to a smaller brush should you need to. But you can see it's just kind of a little bit showing underneath his body armour just in there. There's also the sleeves on his shirt as well. With all that red base coated in, we can now move on to the next leather colour, which is Snakebite Leather, another one of Citadel's contrast paints. And this is mainly going to be for leather straps, for example this bandolier around here. But your miniature might have some leather armour visible, in which case get that too. Now with this paint, to make sure it's dark enough, be sure to apply a second coat in the exact same way once the first one's completely dry. <laughs> 
Once you finish that leather, we're then ready to start painting all the metallic colours, beginning with some gunmetal, which is a darker silver, and this is primarily going to be for all the armour plating. So I'm using my regiment brush once again for this, and looking for these panels, and just picking them out. But there's also some silver details in the thermic lance which are darker than the rest of them, and that includes things such as the muzzle on here, and also the central bar of it. So we're looking at areas such as just along here. With that done, we're then ready to move on to our second metallic, which is going to be bright gold. And this is for these armoured details we've got on the thighs just here, the main part of the helmet, so around about this area here, and also there are a few little beads on these details that we've got hanging from the belt. And you can see them just around here, so be sure that you don't miss these details at this stage as well. And finally, we just need some plate mail metal, and this is for all the remaining areas on the thermic lance. And with that we've now finished applying all the base coats to the miniature, but it is looking a little bit flat at this stage. So what we need to do now is apply a wash to it to give some more definition and outline all the different details on it, and make it appear a little bit more grimy, so perfect for the wasteland. To do this what you need is a dark brown wash, and I'm going to be using some strong tone from the Army Painter, but if you wanted to use Citadel, Agrax Earthshade's a great choice here. Whatever you go for, what you need to do is to get some on your palette first of all. So I've got some of my strong tone just here, it's going to get a good little puddle of it there like that. And to apply it, what you need is a large size brush, and I'm going to be using a monster brush also from the Army Painter. Really good size for this because this is going to be painted all over the miniature in one go. Now with this particular paint I find adding a touch of water to it is a good idea, just to help it flow a little bit smoothly. So there we go. And once you've got that ready, it's just a matter of loading this up on your brush and applying it all over the miniature. And that includes over all the details on it. So for example on here, all you do is paint on like this, and you can see straight away it runs into all that recessed detail. It gives you lots of definition, and also a slightly oily finish as well, because it's a brown colour. Now as you're applying this kind of thing all over the miniature, bear in mind it will tend to run towards the bottom of the model, and if you're not careful it can really build up in some places. So for example, if I get a lot of my brush and apply it to the cloak there like that, you can see that big bubble of it just there, that big lump of the paint. If it dries like that, it looks really horrible once it is dry. So if you spot that happening, just move away the excess like that with your brush, and just redistribute it elsewhere around the miniature. Once you have painted this all over the model, give it plenty of time to dry. About 45 minutes should be fine. And with that wash now completely dry, you can see the detail is much more defined and the model is starting to come to life. But with that done, we can now move on to the next step, which is to paint in the skin. Now on this particular model, there's not actually very much, but you can see it, so we do need to do it. But for other members of Caesar's Legion, just follow the same process as what we're going to do now. For the skin, we just need to base coat it using some Bugman's Glow, and then we're going to wash over it with some Ripen Flesh Shade. After that, we need to brighten it up using some Cadian Flesh Tone, and then a highlighter Kislev Flesh. And all four of these paints are from Citadel. First of all though, we need to base coat using Bugman's Glow, and to do this, I've returned to my regiment brush from the Army Painter, and you just need to get a small amount of this ready. And the areas we're looking at for this particular miniature are just this part of the skin that's available or visible on the arm, just down here. So it's just a matter of blocking in that area there like that. But also, there's the ends of the fingers too, because he's wearing some fingerless gloves. So just be sure to pick those out as well. Once that base coat is completely dry, you're then ready to move on to Reichland Flesh Shade, and still using that regiment brush, apply this all over the skin. Once the wash is completely dry, you can see it gives the skin a nice warm tone, and with that done we can then move on to layering it using Cadian Flesh Tone. And with this I'm using my detail brush, and what I'm looking to do is to apply a thin coat onto the flatter areas of the muscle, but avoid the recessed areas where that wash settled. So you can see there, I've just done that bit there, I'm going to skip that recess just beneath it and apply the colour there like that. And you can see by doing this it really brings it to life and helps the details stand out. And it's just a matter of repeating this on all of the skin. Now in this particular miniature too there is one very small detail to get at this stage, and that is the tiny bit of his nose that you can see just beneath the goggles, and that is just in there. And then finally we just need a small amount of Kislev Flesh to highlight the skin, and for this, still using that detail brush, just apply a small amount of this colour along the top of each muscle where the light would catch. So for example along there, a little bit along just there, and small amount around here. And just do the same thing on the fingers, and also the tiny bit of nose that can be seen there. Again, just looking for those raised areas, just gently picking them out. And 
And with that, the skin is complete and we can now move on to the next step, which is to return to that red we originally base coated on the model and apply a layer of it now, because whilst the wash has given it lots of definition, it has dulled it down quite a lot and it is the key color on these models. So we want it to stand out a little bit more. So we need to return to Wasdaka Red for this and to apply it, I'm again going to be using that regiment brush. But the application this time is going to be much more controlled than when we base coated with it. Essentially what we're looking to do is to avoid recessed areas. So we do need some control. So to help out with that, on your palette, just make sure your paint's thin down, a little bit more runny than it was the time you base coated with it. Just test it on there to make sure it's flowing easily from your brush. Because now what we need to do is to look on these red details and avoid the recesses. So for example, on this little bit of cloak we got here, because these darker areas where that wash settled, what I'm going to do is apply this colour to the flatter raised areas, but not quite go into the deepest recesses. So for example, that crease just there, and skipping past that recess just there, and carrying on again on the other side like this. So it's just a matter now of doing this on all the red details. And with that layering done, you can see we've now got a really smooth finish to all of that red, and we can move on to highlighting the miniature. And to do this, we're going to start out by highlighting all that black detail, for which we need two colours. First of all, we need a dark grey, so I'm going to use Mechanica Standard Grey, and then we need a lighter grey to finish it off. For this, I'm going to use Administratum Grey. But first of all, what we need is Mechanica Standard Grey, and to apply it, go for your smallest brush, so I've got my detail brush once more. And with this, what we're looking to do is to use the colour to pick out the parts that stand out the most on the black detail. So to help out with doing that, what you must do is just make sure your paint flows very well from your brush. So on the palette, you just need to spend a bit of time getting this ready. Add some water to it and mix it in and then test it to see how well it flows from your brush. And at this stage, it's going fairly well, but it is drying out a little bit the further along I go. So I'm going to add just a bit more water to it. There we go. And you'll find over time as you get more experience with this, you'll kind of know what to look for for each paint as you use it. But generally, once you've got it thinned down a bit more, try testing it then. This is flowing a bit better off the brush now, so that looks pretty good to me. See, I'm just testing with these lines, seeing how far it can go for, and it's going pretty far, so that's good. Then when it comes time to apply it to the miniature, a key thing to do is to make sure you don't overdo it. So I use some tissue to get rid of excess paint off my brush. Just draw up a small amount from the part that I know is thinned down correctly, and then ready to start applying it to the miniature. And what we're looking to do is to look for the black details, such as the kilt here, and we're looking for the raised parts. And you can see there's lots of creases running all the way around it. What I'm gonna do is approach those creases using the side of my brush and just gently skim along them like that to get a fine line appearing on the top of them to help emphasize the detail a little bit more. So the same is true on this crease just there. And a bit further around, we've got one just there like that. And you just kind of work your way around doing that. Now when it comes time to doing the hem, just turn the model so it's comfortable to approach it using that side of your brush once again, and just gently just follow all the way along the bottom there like that to get a nice highlight on it. Now when it comes to other black details, it's not always possible to approach it like that, such as this band that we've got on the forearm just here. And to do that, what you need to do is again paint straight lines, but this time using the tip of your brush. And the easiest way to do this is to angle the model so that you're painting in a downward motion. So like that with my hand, it's nice and natural to do and you can see clearly what you're doing and just aim it at the very edge of that detail and just gently build it up there like that. This way you get a nice fine highlight in those areas. So now it's just a matter of working your way around the miniature, always looking for these edges on the black details and gently picking them out. And with that done, we can then move on to applying a second highlight onto the black details, this time using a lighter grey, so I've got Administratum Grey. And for this, what we're going to do is use much the same techniques, only focusing this colour a little bit more onto more defined areas. So for example, on the kilt, you can see I'm just going towards the bottom here where the sharpness is on that little edge just down there, just to make it stand out a little bit more. And with that, the black detail is now complete and we can move on to highlighting the remaining colours on the miniature. And to do this, we're going to start out with three paints from Citadel. First of all, some squig orange, which is going to be used to highlight all of that red. And then after that, we'll need some Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to use this for all the different tones of leather on the miniature. After that, we're going to move on to Liberator Gold, and this will be for the gold details on the armour. And then finally, we're going to use a paint from the Army Painter. And this one is Shining Silver for all that silver detail. But first of all, what we need is squig orange, and the application is going to be just like what we were doing with the black a moment ago. So still using that detail brush. Just get a small amount of this thinned down, just testing it on the palette to make sure it's flowing easily from your brush. And then remember, make sure the brush isn't overloaded. Get a small amount on here, and with this, what we're looking for is the tops of creases and any edges on the red details. So on a little cloak, for example, you can see we've got the edge around here, so I'm just going to approach it with the side of the brush and just very delicately skim along there like that. And then we've got the tops of these creases, which aren't quite so sharp as what the kilt was. So for this, I'm going to be doing that downward motion, 
just looking for the very top and just gently building up the colour there like that. Now when it comes to the crest and the helmet, just make sure you've only got a very small amount of paint on your brush. Just approach this with the side of it and just gently sort of run it across like that and you'll get the colour slowly building up on the raised areas of that detail. Next we're ready for some Bane Blade Brown and this is to highlight all the leather details, so both shades of it. And with this once again you're just looking for those edges and just very gently start picking them out. So for example there on the bandolier, on there, and then just changing the angle to get these raised details along here. Also at this stage be sure to pick out these little straps that we've got in the helmet which are just up here. Just base coat along here like this. And with that those leather details are now complete and we can move on to finishing off the metallic details. For this first of all we need some Liberator Gold and this is for those golden details such as this bit of armour here on the thigh. And again we're just looking for those sharper edges and just turn the brush as you need to to access them, just to catch them with the side of your brush to get a fine highlight. And finally we're then ready to highlight all the silver details using some shining silver. Once again looking for all those edges and just gently picking them out, such as this shoulder plate just here. You see always angling my brush so I can catch that edge. But also when we're doing the silver it's now also time to pick out any buckles. For example this one here on this strap, just gently pick out the detail like this. And with those highlights now applied the model is very nearly done, we just need to do a few more details on him before doing his base. And for these details all you need is a bright red first of all for the red marking on his shoulder plate, and for this I'm going to use some Evelson Scarlet from Citadel. But then what we need to do is to paint in the lenses of his goggles black, and for this we're going to return to Black Templar. But first of all we need some Evelson Scarlet, and to apply it again I'm going to be using the detail brush, and for this we're just looking to do a little freehand symbol on it, so we don't need that much of it, but it is important that you make sure that paint's flowing really easily. Think of it like when you're doing those edge highlights earlier on, just make sure the paint's quite runny there, a little bit more than that I think. So there we go, and with this what we're looking to do is just do a kind of like, it's almost like a slash sort of marking for this cross that we have on the shoulder. So make sure you've got a fine tip on your brush, and what you do is just angle the model so that you're painting downwards and towards yourself around about here, so the middle of it's going to go across the middle of the shoulder, and just paint in a line like that. Once you've got that, rotate it, and then do the same thing going the other way. There we go, like that, and from then on it's just a matter of just widening out the pattern a little bit in the middle to finish it off. And once you're happy with that marking on the shoulder you're then ready to paint in the lenses of the goggles, and for this you just need to return to Black Templar and just gently run it into the lens like this. And with that the Centurion himself is now complete and all we need to do is to paint in his base. Now to do this what we're going to do first of all is add a bit more text to it on those open areas, a little bit more grit for it and also colour it as well. And for this we're going to use a paint from Citadel which is a Grellum Badland. Now after that we need to start picking out some finer details on the base, and to begin with we need a dark grey, so Mechanica Standard Grey is going to be perfect for this. But after that we need to use some paint from the Army Painter for some of the details that are unique to this particular base. And that is some brass first of all, for which we need true copper, then some red fabric, and for this I'm going to use some Dragon Red. But first of all what we need is a Grellum Badland, and to apply this I've actually got two brushes. To begin with I've got a medium base brush here from Citadel, a very old one which you can see is frayed all over the place, but that's because this is a textured paint and so it's always a little bit mucky when you first apply it. And I use this brush for getting a little amount like that, and then applying it to the base. And what you should do is just look for an open space such as around here, just put it on like that and start pasting it down with this brush. Then once you've got someone there like that, it's time to switch to your different brush, which is actually a regiment brush from the Army Painter, but this is an old one I keep around for this kind of purpose, because this has a bit more control, and so using this I can start poking it around and moving it up to the other details, and also by just getting a little bit of water on the brush, you can also use the colour of it as well by just bringing it out from there and spreading it around the base. So now it's just a matter of going back and forth between these two brushes like this, just applying some of this to this open area, and just being really careful when you get close to the feet of the miniature. Once that textured paint is completely dry you're then ready to start picking out details on the base. And to begin with what we need is Mechanica Standard Grey, and this is for any concrete or larger rocks that happen to be on the base. Next up we need a brass paint, so I'm going to be using True Copper, and this is for this disc on this fallen banner that's on the base. And all you need to do is just block in the entire area.
And then finally we need to base coat in the fabric of the banner on the floor. Now for this we need a red, and a bright red is a good one. Essentially anything that's different from the fabric we've used on the actual Centurion is good though. So I'm using Dragon Red from the Army Painter, and it's just a matter of blocking in the entire area. And there we go, that red's been applied, and you can see by using a different red from the rest of the miniature we've made sure that we've separated the two details, but also we've made sure they don't clash as well. And with that done we can now move on to the next step, which is to apply a wash to the base to really bring out all of that texture. And to do this we're actually going to use two colours at the same time, and allow them to mix to get a nice natural feel to it. What we need to do is return to the strong tone that we used earlier on, but we also need to add an olive green to it, and for this I'm going to be using a Thonian Camo Shade from Citadel. Now to get this ready I'm going to start out with some strong tone, and this just needs to go on the palette, so I've got a little puddle like that, and then I'm going to be applying it with that monster brush that we had previously. Like previously as well, I'm going to thin it down with just a little bit of water, so there we go. And then all you do is start applying this to the base randomly. So I'm going to start around about here, it doesn't really matter exactly where, but you just start painting it on so it runs into the recessed detail. And as you're applying it, every now and then just grab some Ethonian Camo Shade and apply that too, and just allow the two colours to mix randomly as you paint it over all these details. Once that mix is dry we can then move on to dry brushing all that texture to really bring it all out. And all of this can be done with just one colour, what you need is a bone colour to give it a kind of dusty feel, and so I'm going to use some skeleton bone from the Army Painter. To apply it go for a small dry brush, and I have in fact a small dry brush from Citadel just here, and I've got some of the paint on the palette already. To apply it all you do is just get a small amount on the end of the bristles there like that, and get some tissue and use it to work it into the brush, getting rid of the excess as you go, until there's hardly anything left on there. And then with this all you've got to do is start drawing it back and forth across the texture on the base, and you'll see the colour catches the raised detail and gives a nice highlight very quickly and easily, and gives that dusty finish as well. And you just do this across all the details on the base at the same time. Now with this done it's entirely up to you what you do next, because if you want to what you can do is add some grass tufts to the base, and that's what I'm going to do, using some mountain tufts from the Army Painter. Then all you need to do is to paint the rim of the base, and this could be any colour you like, but I'm going to go for some matte black. With that base now fully painted, this Centurion is complete and ready to take the battle to the new California Republic. So as you've seen, painting this model is very straightforward, but always remember to apply the paint as neatly as you can when you get into those finer details, just to really bring the miniature to life. But we hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you all again very soon.